Hey, what's going on? It's your Wednesday episode of Locked On Raptors, and the Toronto Raptors have passed the halfway point of the season as of Monday night, and so it's an annual tradition that we go through just about this time every year around the 41-game mark. It is a look back at our preseason over-unders competition with Vivek Jacob and Sahal Abdi. We're going to check in on who's winning, who's in line to win, which ones are still up in the air of the 18 questions we went through. It's been a very interesting and weird Raptors season in many ways as expected, in many more ways not at all as expected. We'll dig into all of it in our over-under spectacular halfway check-in on today's episode of Locked on Raptors. Thanks for being here. You are Locked on Raptors, your daily Toronto Raptors podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on? Welcome to episode number 1100 of Locked On Raptors for Wednesday, January the 19th. I'm your host, Sean Woodley of RaptorsHQ.com. You can find me on Twitter as always, at WoodleySean. You can find the show at Locked On Raptors. And of course, you can follow, subscribe to, rate, review the podcast on all your favorite podcast apps for free. And you can find the show on YouTube. Just hit that big red subscribe button. Also, for the low, low price of On the House, just to go and support the YouTube family. It's very much appreciated. Lots of new subs the last couple of weeks here. Let's keep the numbers going up. And as always, a big thank you for making us your first listen of the day. All right, on today's show, we got a lot to get to. We have reached the halfway point of the season, which means it's time to pull out the old spreadsheet and take a look at our over-under predictions from before the season. For those of you who are not familiar, this is the fifth annual Locked on Raptors over under spectacular, and uh, it's a lot of fun every year. I'm still looking for my first win. My two guests are here. They've both won in the past, one more than the other, uh, but we are joined now by Sahal Abdi from Raptors Republic to wrap up. How's it going, pal? It's going great. I mean, it was going great until you mentioned that Vivek has a nice astounding lead on both of us, but I mean, as far as I know, I, I'm going to make a little comeback here, so we'll see. Hey, man, at least you're not me sitting here, uh, the c- c- proprietor of this game who has yet to win. And I, I, honestly, looking at the I haven't gone through the totals just yet, but I don't think it's looking so hot for Sean this time around either. Uh, we're also joined, of course, by Vivek Jacob, our usual Monday guest here slumming it on a Wednesday once again. Uh, how's it going, pal? It's good. It's good. I'm excited to get to this. This is always one of the uh, podcasts that I look forward to doing. Um I think Sahal is looking pretty good at the halfway stage, but uh, I guess we can play out the numbers and see where they're at. Yeah, I didn't want to like eliminate the suspense and know the result going in, which maybe is like a lack of preparation on my end. But actually, I think it's uh, a smart thing that I've done here because I think it's going to lend to more drama on the podcast. All right. Without further ado, let's dive in. Actually, before we do that, I should tell you that today's show is brought to you by our friends over at Prize Picks. It's daily fantasy made easy. Check out prizepicks.com. Use the promo code NBA or go to your app store and download the app today. Prize Picks, it's daily fantasy in an easy and digestible and very fun way. So go check it out. All right, let's dive in now to the first of our 18 over unders from before the season. It was OG and an OB points per game. I set the over under at 20.5. I took the over. Vivek took the over. Sahal took the under. OG Ananobi is currently averaging 19.2 points per game, meaning that Sahal is uh, currently in the lead, the hypothetical lead. Again, of course, this is going to change over the course of the back part of the season. Plenty of things can go wrong for Sahal if he does have a lead here today. But Sahal, OG, under the 20.5. Are you concerned that he could potentially creep back up over? or with the Raptors healthy now, do you think you've pretty comfortably won this over-under? Um, it's very tough to say because I think OG, he's going to stay in a very similar role that he's in now. Obviously, um, when Gary Trent Jr. comes back, Ken Birch comes back, his usage maybe drops down a little bit, but I think OG is going to be right around that 18 to 21 points per game mark. Um, hmm. I can't really be too happy about this over-under, to be honest, guys, because it's so close. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like it was a very good call on your part, Sean, to, to set it out what you set it out. But I'm gonna say Thank I'm, you. I'm winning that it's at gonna... something. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say I'm gonna say it's, I'm confident that it's gonna stay where it is. I don't know if it's gonna drop down, um, you know, tremendously or even raise tremendously from where it is um, right now. Yeah, I would say I'm skeptical that it's going to go up unless the Raptors are befallen by a ton of injuries. But it's pretty clear to me that OG is third in the pecking order now behind Fred and Pascal. 
and yes, Pascal is creating a lot for others, and maybe that could lend to you know itself to like more open looks for OG and whatnot. But OG is still seeing a lot of attention, and I think as the third option, who's got about a twenty three percent usage right now, it'll be tough for him to b- punch over that twenty point five. But certainly, I mean, we're like a week of thirty point efforts away from this being a serious conversation. So we'll certainly keep a tabs on that one. But right now, it's a hall with the tentative one nothing lead on both Big V and I. We move next to Pascal Siakam, points plus rebounds plus assists. This is the question I used to always reserve for Kyle Lowry. He is no longer around. I set the over-under at 33.5 as the combination. We all took the over, and fellas, we look really smart right now. 34.4 is what Pascal is at, and rising as he continues to go up in his scoring totals. Vivek, are you at all concerned this one could slip back below 33.5 or are you expecting, are you in the point where you're doubling down and expecting, oh, this is going to be like a a very clear win for all three of us? Yeah, I would double down. I think Pascal is only getting better as the season goes along and you can see that with the numbers and I think that he is probably going to continue to up his scoring, his assists uh, and then, you know, with the way the Raptors are playing, they need mm-hmm. him to rebound at the level he's rebounding at. And so I, mm-hmm. I expect that to sustain uh, as well. Uh, you know, maybe he won't have a stretch where, you know, he's averaging 15 rebounds a game for a little bit <laughs> and being called Pascal Rodman. But uh, I think, <laughs> you know, he, he'll be over the 33.5 pretty comfortably. Yeah, I, I think I'm feeling pretty good about this one. It's a bummer because we all took the same thing. So there's no gaining ground. It's just a point for both of us and in in, in a feather in the cap there, but Big V. But um, yeah, Pascal's been incredible. His assists are going way up, just like continually climbing that uh, positive curve. And like, I don't know where they land this season, but like the last 12 games or so, since December 28th, he's been averaging 6.9 assists per game. Big V, if you had to just like guess a total that he finishes at assists wise this season, what would you land on? So right now for the season, he's at 4.9, right? 5.0 as of today. 5.0. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, back to back so, 10 assist games will do that for you. <laughs> yeah. So I, I would say it probably, the ceiling is probably five and a half. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's probably, I think, as high as it will go uh, over the course of the. Uh, you know, remaining 41 games, but uh, yeah, if he's over that five assist mark and he's going to give you nine plus rebounds and, you know, 22, 23 plus points, that is uh, very much an all NBA player. He's bloody good at basketball. As it turns out, we'll get to the all NBA thing a little bit later on as well. Uh, Let's get to the next one here. Fred Van Vliet points per game. I set the over under at 21 and a half. Actually bet online set this over under. And as it turns out, our friends at bet online know what the hell they're doing. Cause they set it at 21 and a half. I took the under Vivek took the under Sahal took the over. And currently Fred Van Vliet is averaging 21.9 points per game. This one could get a little hairy. He's been on a super hot stretch here recently. He's climbed up. He was at 22 for a second there as well. Spent most of the season in the 1920 range. So, Hall, do you fear that the crazy hot shooting of late December, early January could potentially give way to a maybe more human Fred Van Vliet that doesn't average north of 21 and a half? Or is that 0.4 cushion you got right now making you feel at all comfortable? Um, to be quite honest, I'm pretty comfortable where Fred's at right now. I think my reasoning in the um in the first you know episode we did in the beginning of the year was that Fred was going to step into a new role, and I think there was a lot of pressure on him, uh, mm-hmm. scoring load. Um, the Kyle Lowry role, he seamlessly fit into it. Um, but just in terms of his scoring, the way teams are defending him now is insane to me. Like it's absolutely mm-hmm. insane how he can get a high screen 40 feet away from the basket and he has guys charging at him like Steph, mm-hmm. like they would guard Stephen Curry. Um, we've seen it the last few games. I think uh, the stat I read a couple games ago was that he was third in the league in um, points per game in the last month, 29 mm-hmm. and a half. He is very hot as we speak. Um, it's He's extremely hot and I think it will tone down a little bit, but I could see it start, you know, 21 and a half. I could see it just around there. Like this, I really think if I had to guess, it would be right around 21.456. I just don't know where. Um, I don't really see it going maybe too high above the 22 and a half mark. But I think right where it is, is probably where it's going to stay for Fred Van Vliet. So I'm, I'm pretty comfortable. 
I'm feeling pretty optimistic about this one, not because I want to see Fred Van Vliet score fewer points. I just think he will score fewer points. I think right now his numbers are kind of inflated from that, you know, whatever it was, six games and eight night stretches, stretch of 30 points or more. You know, obviously he's capable of doing that again and reinflating the numbers. But I kind of think the way things are settling down now where Pascal is very clearly the guy that should be kind of the engine of the offense. Really, really good things happen, including Fred Van Vliet wide open threes whenever Siakam has it. I, I wonder if maybe that lends to a little bit less of Fred, you know, having to kind of carry the day scoring wise. And he can do other things like play make and uh, defend like a maniac and all that good stuff. Uh, the next one here, we don't really need to talk about this one. Chris Boucher or Gary Trent Jr., who is going to have the higher three-point percentage? Uh, we all said Gary Trent Jr. We all expected a, a, a drop back to the norm, I guess, or at least a bit of a regression from Chris Boucher. He's gone way the other way and is at 24.6%, even with some threes made in the last couple of games here. Gary Trent Jr. is at 368 That's a pretty easy point for all of us. And so as it stands through four over under halfway questions, uh, it's four for Sahal, two for both Vivek and I, we will continue on with our over unders halfway check-in in in just a second here. But first want to tell you about our friends over at prize picks who are daily fantasy made easy. They have figured out the formula to make daily fantasy as fun as it can be and you're not in the world where you know daily fantasy you're up against all these weirdo experts behind the scenes no idea who you're competing against it's all just random and seems like it's entirely rigged against you not the case when it comes to prize picks it has the best nba dfs prop game on the market prize picks offers more nba props than any dfs prop operator and offers all the superstar players as well as bench players only recording a handful of minutes each game again i'll say it again the Justin Champagny over on the rebounds, whatever the rebounds is set at, take the over, just do it, okay? You will win some money. You can pick two to five players in an over-under on their projections, and you can win up to 10 times on any entry. It's just you versus the projected numbers as well. As we said, there are no experts, no sharks kind of hidden behind, just throwing out lineups that you're going to compete against. Not the case. You're just up against the projections prize kit prize picks also allows mixed sport entries. So if you are both a football and basketball fan, you can mix your, your combinations as well. And you can use the award-winning app on both the app store and Google play prize picks is safe and offers fast withdrawals. Go to prizepicks.com today or go to your app store and download the app. All users that deposit and use the promo code NBA will get 50% free. Sorry, $50 free, not 50%, $50 free. If your first prize picks entry scores a single point, that's right. You get $50. If you score a single point on your first prize picks entry, you got to score a single point. That seems pretty easy. It seems like free money. Prize picks is daily fantasy made easy. Go check them out. All right, we continue on here with the over-unders halfway point check-in here for the fifth annual Locked On Raptors over-under spectacular. The next question we've come to is who plays the fourth most minutes per game on the Raptors? We assumed the big three were going to play all the minutes, and uh, we've been right in that. Uh, they are the three team, three leaders in minutes for the team. Uh, that it, that we chose in between here. Oh, this was an open-ended one. This was not an either-or. And so uh, both Vivek and I took Scotty Barnes. Sahal took Gary Trent Jr. And right now, Scotty Barnes is coming in fourth at 35.6 minutes per game. Gary Trent Jr. at 34. So a bit of a gap there. Vivek, this one feels like it's going to be pretty locked up for us. Scotty Barnes uh, likes to play a lot of minutes. They like to play him a lot of minutes. He's very good, as it turns out. And they want to throw him to the wolves, as it were. Uh, Are you concerned at all about this one? Do you think there's a chance Scotty Barnes actually climbs in the standings here in terms of minutes? He's behind OG by just 0.5 minutes per game. Probably not, but maybe if the Raptors start bringing down the minutes of their main guys, maybe Barnes is a benefactor of that. Yeah, I I don't see him catching OG. I think there is an outside shot that it kind of goes down as the season progresses because when you look at what the best fit for the Raptors is uh, in the starting lineup, uh, obviously the two positions that would maybe come into question uh, would be Gary Trent Jr. or Mm -hmm. Scotty Barnes to go for some additional size, uh, get Scotty Barnes to stabilize that second unit a bit. Um, And so I think that's the, that's the one way that could tip it either way. Obviously if Gary goes to the bench, then Scotty's minutes are uh, guaranteed the rest of the way. Uh, But yeah, if Scotty were to uh, head to the bench for whatever reason, um, then that would open the door for Gary. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I guess, you know, the the goes the inverse as well. If Gary Trent becomes the guy that goes to the bench, then, you know, Sahal screwed. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I think we should feel pretty good about that tentative point that we've locked up here, Big V. Let's move on to the next question. This is uh, Scotty Barnes' total Rookie of the Year voting points out of 500. I believe we'll use Tyrese Halliburton as the sort of uh, barometer for this when we set this line. It's 100 is the line right now. I think Halliburton was third in rookie of the year voting last year. Got that hundred vote, uh, at least the points in the votes. Uh, not feeling great about it. Uh, <laughs> Scotty Barnes is good. He's going to get a lot of votes. That said, Cade Cunningham is coming along. Franz Wagner is kicking ass. We know what Evan Mobley is doing. There's a world in which Scotty Barnes isn't actually even in the top three for rookie of the year. I think he's going to be first team all rookie pretty easily, but in terms of rookie of the year voting, he might not be top three, which puts this one into doubt. Both Vivek and I took the under. Sahal took the over. How are you feeling about this one, Sahal? Um, this is probably the one I'm most confident in. Um, mm -hmm. Overall, I think the Raptors made it clear how much they rely on Scotty. He has become a guy who really con contributes in, in a different so many different ways for Toronto I just don't think there's a way which goes back to your last over under Sean this is why mm -hmm. I'm so confident I'm gonna get that one wrong um, <laughs> is because Nick Nurse is absolutely in love with what Scotty brings to this team uh, the fact that he can rebound well he said he's in love well. with Gary though yeah that is true um, be <laughs> he's in love with, with any too. player who has a pulse <laughs> and uh, can play a lick of defense and maybe put up a shot. Although I guess that's not really a prerequisite for Nick Nurse's heart. <laughs> that is true, especially when you're showing up to games in in um, Gucci. What was it? It was like a reversible sweater. Gucci, yeah, reversible <laughs> sweater. I love it. I love it from Gary Trent. Um, but getting back to Scotty, uh, I'm super confident. I know Cade's coming up. Franz Wagner looks absolutely incredible for Orlando. I will mention that because Orlando's mm -hmm. a team that nobody ever talks about. Um, Why would you? If you're talking about the Orlando Magic, yeah. I'm sorry to the wonderful basketball writers who watch all the teams. If you're watching the Magic, you should probably seek help. Carry on. Yeah. You watch <laughs> yeah, Terrence Ross all the time. I was about to say I that. Even yeah, though I Sean the clips. I don't watch, watch full... <laughs> I don't watch full Magic games for Terrence Ross. I, I watch the condensed games when Terrence Ross does cool things, all right? It's uh, okay. a different thing. I'm not sitting there hunkering down, writing notes on a two-and-a-half-hour Orlando Magic game. I have better things to do with my time, all right? Like watch Terrence Ross condensed games. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the two things I mentioned actually before we started recording, um, Sean, was the thing I'm most impressed about this season has been Pascal Siakam, but second is clearly Scotty Barnes. Like No one expected yeah. him to come and make an impact like this on uh, this season, so... Um, if he doesn't win rookie of the year, he's probably going to be right underneath whoever that is, whether it be Evan Mobley, Franz Wagner, Cade Cunningham. Yeah, I'm not happy about this one, but I kind of think Vivek and I are in with a chance on this. And we're not going to award a, temp a tentative point for this because we have no idea of knowing. So we'll award this point at the end of the year. But like... <sighs> Evan Mobley, I feel like, is going to sweep number one. Like, he seems like everyone has locked him up. He's going to be the rookie of the year. Everyone's going to give him the first place vote. Yes, there's half a season left, and things can certainly change, but that's certainly how it feels right now. And then beyond that, like, if you're getting second and third place votes, it's harder to accrue those big-time scores. And I worry that a Cade Cunningham or a Franz Wagner could, or Wagner could sort of sneak in there, maybe both of them. But I, I do think... Barnes is helped by the fact that he's on a team that's winning right now and is playing well. And he's a really, really big part of the team that only has six players that can play. And he's one of those six players. So yeah, this one could go either way at this point. I, I don't think it's going to be like a clear landslide that Barnes beats that hundred total voting points, but we shall see uh, how things transpire down the stretch of the season. A couple of quick ones here. We don't really need to spend too much time on. More total minutes played. Precious Achua or Kem Birch as it stands right now. Precious Achua is ahead of Kem Birch by quite a bit. Birch has only played 483 minutes. It's wild how little he's played so far this season. Achua is at 809. And uh, in this one, I took Precious. You guys both took Kem. So I am now into a fake tie with Sahal, baby. You love to see it. The next one was more total minutes played between Sfi Mahailuk and Yuta Watanabe. And Sfi is currently eighth on the team with 642 minutes played. Yuta is at 315. Uh, we all said Sfi. So, hey, we all get a point for that. That's nice. But 
Uh, we don't really need to linger on that one too much. It's a big difference. You to miss a ton of time, not terribly exciting or anything, but Hey, down the stretch of the season, I would not be surprised at all. If we saw Utah maybe take up a, a little bit more of a role in the rotation than Svi, who uh, has been very bad. Let's go to the next one here. Sorry to power through these ones, but these episodes usually become 50 minute marathons and that's not good for the YouTube algorithm, baby. So let's go to the next one here. Scotty Barnes, five assist games. This was an ambitious one. We laid out. I set it at 30.5. Both you and I took the over, Vivek. We were feeling real good about Scotty Barnes' playmaker. Uh, He uh, and Sahal took the under. And as it stands right now, Scotty Barnes has 10 five or more assist games. Vivek, 21 games left for him to get, or sorry, 41 games left for him to get 21 five assist games. He's playing a little more point guard with the second unit. He's got the ball in his hands a little more often. He's throwing the lobs to Pascal Siaka left, right, and center on the run. Is there a chance Scotty Barnes gets this and hits the over for us, do you think? Uh, There's a Jim Carrey voice chance. Uh, (laughs) I'll say that. (laughs) But uh, I think realistically, if I remember back, I I think this was one of those, and I, I did this on a couple of those where I just want to be optimistic and have fun with it. Um, sure. And so I went with the over. Uh, one interesting thing I did look up is if we had set this for four assist games, I was just about to bring this up. <laughs> he, he would be at eighteen instead of ten. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, which would have completely shifted it. And but and I think that in terms of big picture just speaks to his playmaking. And so whatever. Mm-hmm five versus four you see uh, that ability he has to make his teammates better uh, and create easy opportunities for scoring so yeah I would say there is a chance because again the way his role has shifted and you've seen Delano mm-hmm. Banton and Malachi Flynn fall out of the rotation and he's playing more of those back, backup point guard minutes but I think it would take a lot to do it you know for half the games remaining in the season yeah, I think that's fair. I, I think there's a world in which it happens. It probably involves some horrible injury luck befalling the better players on the team and thrusting Scotty Barnes into, uh, you're our only ball handler, Scotty. Go do the thing, I guess. But I, I don't think that's going to take place. And, you know, I think he's kind of settled into a pretty nice little niche. And honestly, I mean, the game he played against the Heat on Monday, the defensive issues late in the game notwithstanding, I mean, that's kind of a perfect role for scotty barnes to play and he ended up with six assists in that game so hey maybe it's doable maybe it's possible i think he will have more than 10 in the second half of the season i'll certainly say that but whether or not he gets all the way uh to 31 seems pretty unlikely at this point i I will say too just kind of going by the date of the season he took a while to really warm up he didn't get his first five assist game until the 14th game of the season so he's been racking him up 10 in the last 27 games which is not so bad uh we got a couple more to get to here this one toronto raptors to make the all-star game we don't know this one yet of course but i feel like we can probably hand out the hypothetical points fred van vliet's making the all-star team feels like it's happening pascal siakam not so sure either way i took the under on 0.5 raptors in the all-star game vivek took the over sahal took the under so vivek you are in line for this point sahal i will go to you is there any chance uh, that they that we get this point? Like Fred's making it, right? Like there's no way he's not making it at this point. He's just such a clear choice, unless Pascal like ruins his coach vote and they split it and neither make it. Which, in which case, it's bad for the Raptors, bad for everyone who enjoys Fred and Pascal, but good for us, which maybe is worth it. Uh, thoughts on whether this is going to uh, potentially go under or over? Yeah, this is just doom and gloom for us, Sean. Uh, Fred's <laughs> making the All-Star game, um, which is a good thing. I mean, it's a good thing, yeah. obviously, for Toronto. He's went from a Kyle Lowry light to a Kyle Lowry clone almost um, this mm-hmm. season. So it's good. Siakam's been all NBA level the last month um, in the NBA. So, I mean, it's one that I'm I'm angry about because I don't like, uh, you know, Vivek ever getting a one-up on me in this because he's done that <laughs> far too many times. But um, I'll give it to him. I'll give it to him. Yeah, Vivek, you got to do a victory lap here or something. You feel pretty good about this one? <laughs> no, I mean, I I don't even think I'm ahead overall, so I'm definitely not going to do a victory lap. It's 6-5-5 five, five, five after that hypothetical point was handed to you. So it was very, very close. Sahal is one ahead of the two of us, much closer than I thought it would be, actually. Um, we continue on here to the next question of players to score 30 or more points in a game for the Raptors this 
season. I had trouble finding the answer to this one, so we might just have to go on this one on memory. Fred Van Vliet's obviously done it. Pascal Siakam's done it. OG Ananobi has done it, right? They don't need to... Someone talk while I figure this out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he did it once. He had the 36 points against he, the Knicks. Yeah. I, I knew that was yeah. the case, yeah. Um, and Gary Trent Jr. had the 31-point game against the Jazz as well. So there are Jazz, four yeah. right now looking for two more guys to potentially do it. Vivek, do you think there's any chance that I am going to hit the over on this with two extra players scoring 30? They're going to need six players on the season to do it for me to hit. They're playing six players right now. So doesn't seem the odds are in my favor. Uh, but what do you think? I wouldn't rule it out just because of the craziness of the season, right? And, sure. You know, is have we seen sort of the last of the Omicron variant taking its toll uh, on teams uh, all that stuff kind of plays a factor. And so, you know, th- there was that game against Philly. I think uh, Boucher had, what, 28 and 19. Yeah. So he was obviously yeah. awfully yeah. close. So if there's a game, again, where the Raps are shorthanded, one of those guys could, could end up getting over. Obviously, in terms of the candidates, you'd probably have uh, Boucher and Scotty. Uh, mm. Outside of that, it's tough to see it. So, um yeah, I'd say, again, a pretty slim chance, but just because of the nature of the season, I wouldn't rule it out. What's that? What do I hear? A uh, Like a Slovenian bassoon or some sort of instrument <laughs> from the Eastern Bloc of Europe? That. That's Goran Dragic coming in to drop 30 in his first game back with the Raptors after they realized they've needed each other all along? No, that's not happening. But uh, I, I do think Boucher, certainly, that guy can go for 30 anytime he wants because he's insane. Uh, he's got the heat check mentality for it. I also think Scotty Barnes has a 25-point game this season. It'll be tough for him to get to 30, but maybe there's like a game where there's an injury or something and he moves up the pecking order for a day. Or maybe he just feasts in transition for an afternoon or has a crazy uh, three-point effort for one day. I think it's on the table for Scotty. I wouldn't necessarily bank on it, but I feel pretty good about this one. We won't hand out any points for this just yet because it's so up in the air. Um, Don't but rule out I any feel... uh, trade deadline acquisitions either. Don't rule out any Terrence right. Ross. Or... You're right. When yeah. Terrence Ross does come to the Raptors, he's going <laughs> to reprise his 51-point form, and then we'll have to have a conversation about, you know, should he be the, the lead option on the team, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. That's for another day. Uh, we have a little bit more to get, it, to, get to to round out the show. We have a couple of uh, people to tell you about though. The people we're telling you about are our friends over at Built Bar. Uh, Built Bar is fantastic. You should absolutely go and buy yourself some Built Bars. It's the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar, and it is a wonderful way. I have used it to help wean myself off of the garbage ate during December. I feel much better. I'm eating healthier. I'm losing weight, and I'm using Built Bars to help me do that because I'm not going for the like the 350 calorie candy bar at the grocery store aisle anymore because I know I got Built Bars waiting for me back at home. Be sure to check out Built Bar. they got flavors for everybody, so you there's no reason for you not to like one. They've got mint brownie. They've got all the fruit flavors like cherry barcia. They've got peanut butter brownie. They've got raspberry, and they got limited time flavors that pop up on the site from time to time as well. And i got to tell you, if you can get the caramel almond, do it, because it is the best Built Bar I've ever had. And we've been eating these things for like two years. Highly recommend the caramel almond Built Bar. And, uh, you know, if you are a person who, like, keeps secret stashes, speaking of Terrence Ross, I remember Terrence Ross back when he was on the Raptors. He used to have a stash of candy, blue feet, as it were, uh, in his car for when he was in traffic. He told us this one time after he discovered Bulk Barn was a thing. He was eating blue feet. If I was, if he was still on the team or when he does come back to the team at the deadline, I will be telling him in the locker room, hey, Terrence Ross, go eat Bilt Bars, and then I will get summarily kicked out of covering games forever, but it'll be worth it because I've done the good word or done the good work spreading the good word of Built Bar to Terrence Ross. Go to Built.com, use the promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. That is the promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. Well, that ad read got weird. Uh, let's continue on here, shall we? <laughs> to close out the show, it's your first listen of the day. Thank you, as always, for uh, being with us as we continue on with the last few of our over-unders. A lot of these are very, very up in the air, so we won't spend too, too much time on these. But the first one here is uh, which player is going to lead the Raptors in dunks? We all picked a guy. I took OG. Vivek took OG. Uh, and uh, Sahal took Precious Achua. And uh, as it stands right now, Precious Achua leads the team in dunks at 36. A big shout out to Daniel. Big shout out to Daniel Fanone, who sent me this over from his uh, basketball reference perusal. Much appreciated. It should be easier to find how many dunks people have done. It's the most important <laughs> stat in all of basketball, of course. But either way, 
Sahal, 36 dunks for Precious. He's leading OG. How you feeling about this one? They've got that lob chemistry figured out with him and Fred Van Vliet. You got to feel pretty good about this right now. Yeah. Um, I mean, earlier on, I was kind of worried about, I remember mentioning Ken Birch. I was kind of worried about mm -hmm. just uh, rolling to the rim a bit, but he hasn't been healthy um, as of late. He's had a very unlucky season. I'm I'm comfortable with Precious. I'm very comfortable. They seem like they've been relying on him. I know Ken Birch is slated to come back very soon for the Raptors, but um, I'm I'm comfortable with Precious coming in. He doesn't, you know, he misses quite a few shots around the rim. Um, I guess that's just part of his development. Oh, you don't but, say. <laughs> but, but but when he does go up, and when he does attempt dunks, they seem to go in uh, more often than not. So I'm I'm comfortable with this one. It's truly wild watching him because his dunks typically come from either a lob from Fred Van Vliet or he's like put the ball on the deck and is just like driven into someone and is yamming on their head. He's never getting an offensive rebound and then going back up and dunking it. He's getting the offensive rebound and getting it slapped away while he's fiddling it with it at the ground, probably. Um, and it's been a nightmare. But hey, Precious Achu is still leading in dunks, so I guess he can finish around the basket just a little bit. That's great to see. Uh, also, I should note, Chris Boucher is at 31. Scotty Barnes is at 28. And I do think Scotty Barnes has the dunk of the year for the Raptors uh, last night against the Heat pretty easily, I would say. And uh, more Scotty Barnes dunks, I can get on board with that. And him being the leader, none of us would get a point, but all of our hearts would be warm as a result. Uh, let's go to this next very embarrassing one. Uh, more charges drawn. The combination of Fred Van Vliet, Goran Dragic, Gary Trent Jr., and Malachi Flynn back when you thought, hey, they have four guards. That will just be their backcourt, right? wrong we're idiots they just have forwards playing everywhere now uh and of course uh we, we, were they gonna out charge kyle lowry of course not we all said lowry would have more charges drawn uh, vivek can you guess right now the disparity between kyle lowry and not just those four guys but the entire toronto raptors team um i'm going to guess that the raptors have about two charges drawn Mm-hmm. Uh max three. I'm gonna say Kyle at this point of the season probably is closer to you know 14 or 15, maybe. Maybe I should trim that down a little bit just because games missed and whatnot. I I'll say maybe like 12. You'd think. Uh he's got 22 charges taken. Oh, God. <laughs> it's the Raptors wow. of a team have more than you thought. They have nine. Chris Boucher has five of them. So, uh, yeah, not oh. especially close on this one. And I don't think, considering Malachi Flynn's not playing and considering Goran Dragic is, again, somewhere in Slovenia, I think we're screwed on this one. And, uh, I mean, I guess we all get the point there, so we're not actually screwed. I guess you're, you're screwed if you like charges. Of course, my stance is now that Kyle's no longer on the Raptors, the charge is a dangerous play that should be outlawed from basketball entirely. So that's <laughs> the point. Uh, let's get it to this next one here. Can I, can uh, I quickly mention something, yeah. Sean? Yes, the, the Miami do. Heat. I was quick. I was reading an article on Vox Sports about the um, Miami Heat, and of course, Kyle Lowry, um, you know, the newest guard of the Miami Heat, completely changes the culture there. They have. Hmm. This was eight days ago as well. This is. They have seventy-one drawn charges so far this season, and that's more than that is double, insane. They have more than <laughs> double of the next team, the number two team, the Houston Rockets, which is insane. They're on pace to shatter their current record of one hundred and seven. So, thank Kyle Lowry for that. Yeah, miss me with heat culture, Lowry culture forever. Uh, <laughs> let's go on to final offensive ranking as per the offensive rating stats. Uh, I took the under of 22 and a half. I thought they were going to be worse than the 22nd best defense in the end or offense in the NBA. You guys both took the over. You guys are both going to get a point here and get some distance on me. And Sahal, you are now out in front by two points over Vivek, three ahead of me. Uh, let's go with Vivek here. Uh, boy, <laughs> the offense has been a lot better than expected. I keep expecting it to crater because a lot of it doesn't make any sense, but they're good in transition. They smack the offensive glass as hard as anybody, and they seem to be getting by. And now their half court offense is coming into form a little deep, even more with Pascal Siakam looking this good. Are you feeling extremely confident, super duper confident that they're going to be better than the 22nd offense in the league? Or is there a chance here the bottom falls out and they slip to the bottom as it stands? Right now, the Raptors have the 12th best offense 
in the NBA and are uh, only two full points clear of that 22nd spot or 23rd spot. So I, I suppose it's possible. Vivek, thoughts on this one? Yeah, I feel very confident about this one because even going into it, I just felt like, you know, 22 and a half was just too low considering mm-hmm. uh, the talent they, that they had, anticipating uh, Pascal to return to his level. You look at Fred, you look at OG, um, obviously you look at Gary's offense as well. Um, I just didn't think they'd be this. I, I would have expected somewhere between league average and like 20th mm-hmm. uh, as like a worst case scenario. So I felt pretty comfortable about it. And obviously they've still been even better than that. So obviously that helps big time. And uh, yeah, I think I think the defense is probably more of a surprise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll get into this one now. The defense, the over-under, was set uh, for their final defensive ranking at 8.5. So if you took the over, you were saying they were going to be better than 8th or better in defense. If you're taking the under, they were going to be worse than 8th. And uh, Vivek took the under on this one, and he is going to get the hypothetical point here as uh, they are currently the 17th offense, uh, 17th-ranked defense Sorry, in the NBA, 109.7 points allowed per 100 possessions. They are two full points clear of the number eight Miami Heat, as it turns out, in defensive ranking. So they got a lot of ground to make up here. So Hall, is there any hope at all for us to end up here getting the point? Or do you think the defense is a little bit too janky, uh, disjointed, not quite having the reps? Like, Is there a chance for a climb here? Or what are your, what's your read on this one? I think a lot of it's health dependent. If you have mm. the core guys for the Raptors stay healthy, Fred... OG, two guys who, you know, always every year have a solid shot at making an all-NBA defensive team. If you have those two guys healthy, you have Scotty Barnes there, Pascal. Um, I'm I think it's the biggest thing I'm worried about is I don't know if the health is going to, you know, be a constant for the Raptors with the amount of minutes each of their core guys is playing. Like you said earlier, they're going six deep now. Um, it's the starting five and Justin Champagny. So I'm not hundred percent sure if that's gonna Um, be a constant like I said but I think things can change I think things can change um, in a positive way for the Raptors defensively it's just a matter of those guys just locking in it's it's I don't really think any of the guys I guess most uh, most of the starters you could say fit the system perfectly of what Nick Nurse is trying to do it is very janky they do allow a lot of corner threes this is something that people have been talking about for quite a while but um if you can get one more guy in there, maybe at the trade deadline that, that fits the system really well um, and everyone stays healthy, I think they can get over that that little mark right there. Yeah, it's a lot of ground to make up, but I'll say I, I think it's yeah. more likely they finish top 10 than they finish bottom 10, bottom even though they're 10, yeah. 17th right now. Like I, I think they'll probably end up somewhere in the middle 10 of the league. That's where they've been all year, basically. But I think like the the theoretical like peak version of the Raptors defense has appeared more often lately than it did at the early part of the year. And that's for obvious reasons, right? They have more guys available. It's been longer time in terms of reps and everything. I do think the point Vivek made way back at the start of this about the Raptors just being too damn young to have a top eight defense probably was uh, pretty salient back in the day. Like they, having Scotty Barnes be a big part of their team. He is learning. He's figuring things out. We saw in that game against the Heat, the screw up the switch or lack thereof in uh, that final possession where Jimmy Butler set up the open open three for P.J. Tucker to win. Like, it's going to happen when you have a rookie who's getting that many reps. I do think I, I expect him to be a lot more sort of fine-tuned as a defender as the season goes along. He's been a, a better defender in the last month than he was in the first month. And so I... Again, I don't think they're going to be top eight. It's a lot of ground to gain here, but I do think we could see a pretty stark rise up into you know 10th, 11th or something like that, and I would not be totally surprised. And I think that would probably come with a bit of a drop-off on the offensive end because I feel like it's been a little unsustainable the way they've done it so far. But that's besides the point. We continue on. Just a couple left here. Regular season wins. The over-under was set by Bet Online at 36 and a half. I took the over, and for a bonus point, we were taking the final record prediction as well. And I said 42 and 40, which is what they are exactly on pace for right now. Vivek also took the over 43 and 39, and Sahal took the over at 41 and 41. So guess what? I'm giving myself a bonus point because I'm on track <laughs> to get that bonus point. You're damn right I'm doing it. And uh, But you guys also get a point as well. 
for, uh, I think, picking rightly over the 36 and a half. Vivek, anything on this one? Like, this that always seemed like a low line, and it's like classically, oh, the Raptors lower than what you expect because, you know, people don't think about the Raptors. But uh, do you feel like this one is kind of locked up, or are you worried that they might not pick up 17 wins between now and the end of the season? I mean, again, because of the strangeness of the season, I wouldn't rule it out. But Mm -hmm. if, you know, health being equal, I would absolutely expect them to finish over 500. I feel good about Mm -hmm. where this is at. Uh, The big challenge is in terms of what they face the rest of the season is, I think, beginning with the road stretch, beginning with that Miami game, they entered a Mm -hmm. stretch where they were playing 24 of 34 on the road. So uh, I think how they fare on the road is going to have a huge say in their overall record. But uh, I definitely feel comfortable with them finishing over the 36 and a half. Will they get to the 43 and 39 that uh, that I suggested? Uh, that might be a little difficult. Truly the most bizarre scheduling I can recall in terms of wild swings between, oh, you're home all month or you're on the road for a month and a half. And they closed, I think, with eight of 10 at home. So that's nice, too. Uh, I feel pretty good about this over. And honestly, I feel like my 42 and 40, as much as I get the bonus point now, I don't know if I'm getting to the end because I think they could actually win more games if they have their guys available because they're pretty good. I don't know. There's a good team. They play really well against good teams recently and and they're not always going to play against good teams all the time and they will pick up some of those wins against said teams anyway uh let's get into the second last one here yeah no go ahead what was that they they also play bad against bad teams this is not incorrect uh (laughs) let's continue on (laughs) maybe 500 or 42 and 40 is dead on then uh let's finish up the second to last one here pretty quick one total games played by the toronto raptors this season we can't hand this one out yet because we don't know if they've yet played in a play-in game 83.5 was the number i set it at uh, baking in one play-in game potentially and then a postseason series or multiple playing games, multiple post game, postseason games, whatever it is, 83 and a half is what it's at. We can't judge this one just yet. So we will move on to the final and probably meatiest question to dive into here. Season ending award winners, MVP, rookie of the year, DPOI, all defense, all rookie, all NBA, coach of the year. You could take your pick of them. I said it at two and a half to run a Raptors winning at least one season ending award. So, Hall, I'll go to you first on this one. I want Vivek's take as well. It's an interesting one right now. Scotty Barnes feels like a shoe in for all rookie. The All-NBA case for Fred Van Vliet or Pascal Siakam is slowly coming into picture, although maybe won't get there. Uh, obviously, you've got all defense as well. It seems like there's maybe a little bit more hype for a Fred Van Vliet for that this year, too. Uh, this one, I think, could come right down to the wire. How are you feeling about this one? I should say uh, that we all took... Or sorry, I took the over on uh, 2.5. Vivek took the over. Sahal took the under. And we all took the over on 83 and a half games played as well. So we'll keep tabs on that one going to the end. But season-ending awards, Sahal. How are you feeling about this? Um, I'm okay saying under 2.5. Um, mm-hmm. Like you said, Scotty Barnes in the all-rookie is probably the most guaranteed thing you can get at this point in the season. Um, and then you're you're you might be looking at an all NBA for Fred or Pascal, like you said. It really just again depends on health. I think if they're both healthy for the rest of the season, they can easily both get there in the third team. Um, and then the all defensive team, you don't know. Um, <laughs> it's so difficult because each Raptor has missed time this year, and like I mentioned before, fatigue might come into play with these tight rotations. So you might see guys miss games. You might see guys sit out. Um, I think there's going to be two, and I'm going to sit at that for now. I just don't see more than that. There's no most improved player. Fred has improved. It's just when you have guys like John Morant in the league and some other guys, um, there's no way he's going to get that. Sixth man of the year. I mean, the Raptors have had no Mm -hmm. bench, so... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so uh, i'm okay with Can saying justin champagne went sure. on the strength of rebounding alone like has that ever happened before <laughs> the best offensive rebounder the raptors have ever had i don't know I'm, I'm okay with two i'm okay with two um but i'm sure you guys are are okay with three <laughs> i feel pretty good about it right now i'll tell you i mentioned fred for all defense but if i had to make an all defense pick right now from the raptors obviously the position i think is maybe a little bit more competitive but it's pascal for me he's been ridiculous on that end for like two months now he's been so so good the the last game against the heat i thought i said this on monday's pod 
was the best defensive game he's played all year, one of the better ones he's ever played. Like he's just everything that is going well for the Raptors defense right now is in large part because Pascal Siakam is cleaning up messes on the back end and just kind of being a menace all over the place. He's been awesome. So stealthy all defense pick there. Vivek, the two and a half over under for total awards. How are you feeling on this one? Yeah, I'm probably a, a bit more like Sahal in terms of thinking it's touch and go. Uh, but I do feel more confident in the all defense than the all NBA. I yeah. I would be, frankly, very surprised if Fred Van Vliet didn't make the all defensive team. I think when I look at the candidates at the guard spots, you know, you'll have uh, Alex Caruso, you'll have uh, Drew Holiday. And then you look at the guards beyond that, it does get, uh, it, it does open up quite a bit. You know, maybe. Chris Paul gets another nod. Maybe Patrick Beverly gets a nod. Uh, but Marcus you know, Smart's think, always hanging around. Yeah, but but again, this time, uh, you know, I feel like the Celtics have been a bit too up and down for him to be ahead of Fred anyway. Um, yeah. And then, you know, Dylan Brooks ha- hasn't played enough games. Ben Simmons hasn't played a game. So uh, I think that's where f- I feel very confident about, about Fred making the all defense team. It's the all NBA team where, you know, you look at the guards. Uh, I mean, it, it's hard to pick the guards just for the Eastern conference for the all-star game. So you throw in, you know, <laughs> Steph and Ja and Donovan Mitchell and uh, all those guys in the Western conference. And I think that's where uh, it's going to be tough to make an all NBA team. Uh, I wouldn't rule it out. Uh, you got to bet on Fred, but uh yeah. i think that's where it, it gets interesting yeah i honestly think because of like the injury now to kd and just sort of it seems like a bit of a thinner forward group maybe in terms of all the nba guys this year like there's an there's an argument that pascal could be like the fourth forward on the all-star team right now right and, and so if you kind of take that out like yeah i, I think there's a non insignificant chance that Pascal gets on there more so than Fred. Like I, I just think Fred's up against really stiff competition. And I think Pascal, the way he's played has been all NBA level. He's played as well as he did, but he made all all NBA, even though I think we've agreed that it should have been Lowry's all NBA that season, not Pascal's, but that's besides the point. That's the story of Kyle Lowry's career. Uh, <laughs> we don't need to relitigate that, but yeah, this one is going to be very much a coin flip. I mean, hey, maybe the Raptors go on some insane second half run and Nick Nurse gets coach of the year again. Who's to say? But uh, that seems like kind of a far-fetched dream. I'm just trying to imagine ways in which uh, I get the point on this one. Not seeing other other than those ones we've talked about, not seeing a ton of easy opportunities there. Uh, I will so, say very yeah. quickly, um, hmm. Jean Morant and Darius Garland should absolutely not be in the conversation for most improved player. For me... When you, you when you're a top five pick, I'm sorry. Those are the <laughs> should be good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Those are the expectations. Uh, yeah, that's fair. And, and so you know, for me so right you're not now, in, you're not for Andrew Wiggins' most improved either. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, for most me, if I had a vote around would, him, maybe yeah, it would definitely <laughs> be good. Miles, Miles Bridges would definitely get my vote. Yeah, mm. Bridges is a pretty good one. It's it's hard to really. I mean, Jaws got so good though. Yeah, you're probably right. I don't know. I that's a silly award. Everyone has a, their own interpretation of it. Yeah, you're right. It's an award I care about only when Raptors win it, and if not, I don't really care. So hey, well, I, I couldn't tell you the last like ten. Basically, most what I'm saying is, other than Siakam. my book, Fred has a better argument for most improved than Ja or Darius Garland. I like it. Mm-hmm. I like it. Um, he should just get it. Mostly, he should get everything. He's an undrafted guy. He should get all of the awards. Uh, that's going to do it for the first half of the over unders. I'll update you on the scores as it stands right now. Again, we didn't hand out points for everything here, but at the halfway point, Sahal has 10 points, Vivek with nine, and I'm bringing up the rear as usual with eight, although it can go really any way. And I think any one of us could pull this out. We should wrap it there, though. We've gone quite long, as we tend to on this very special biannual episode or annual. I don't know. I guess we do three of these a year in some way, shape, or form. But to wrap up, Sahal, anything that you would like to promote for the good people out there? Yeah. Um, if you guys are interested, uh, Raptors Republic has a new post-game live show that we're on after every game. It's called The Wrap-Up Live. You can check us out on YouTube or Twitch. Um, and also my own personal podcast I have with some of my friends, closest friends, uh, a bit more of on the funny side of, of the NBA. Um, it's called Basketball Bullies Podcast, and you could find that anywhere you listen to podcasts. So that's about it for me. 
Right on, man. Uh, Vivek, anything you got to promote? Usual stuff. Uh, Raptors.com, CBC Sports, Complex. Uh, if you haven't read my uh, story on Pascal Siakam's return to all NBA form, uh, that's up on Raptors.com, so you can check that out. Uh, I also would give a shout out to uh, Samson Folk. He did an awesome feature on Scotty Barnes. Uh, Friday's on- guest, baby. <laughs> but uh, yeah, definitely go read that if you haven't already. Yeah, Samson rocks. Uh, we're going to talk about that Scotty Barnes piece coming up on Friday's episode of the podcast. And there's a chance that's the next episode of the show. I might not be able to watch the Mavericks game tomorrow. It's my fiance's 30th birthday. And I feel like if I say, hey, I'm going to go watch the Mavericks play, uh, that might uh, not go over super well. And so uh, I might catch the game on Thursday morning. It all depends on sort of other work responsibilities and stuff like that. But I'm warning you ahead of time, there might not be a Raptors Mavericks recap podcast. I'm going to try my best, but we shall see. We'll definitely be back on Friday, though. I've got my chat with Samson Folk all lined up for Thursday. That's going to be ready to run on Friday. We're going to talk about his fantastic piece about Scotty Barnes that Vivek just mentioned. And with that, we will wrap up another halfway point look-in edition of the Locked On Raptors over under Spectacular. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Go make your second listen, Locked On Bets, as your boy Q and Lee Sterling are helping you win some money with their wonderful betting advice. So go check that podcast out wherever you get your podcasts. And with that, we will talk to you again very soon with another episode of Locked On Raptors. Bye-bye.